respect. Organization want they respect. Laker Nation want they respect. And I want my damn respect too. They say hello to the champ. Just a few weeks after winning yet another NBA championship, the Lakers have already pretty much renovated that entire roster. They picked up the top two bench scores in the NBA and Dennis Schroeder and Montrose Harrell also improved their three-point shooting by adding Wesley Matthews to a team that ranked 21st in three-point percentage last season and re-signing KCP to a new three-year deal. Yeah, that should help in that area also. All right, to dig a little deeper into NBA free agency, we've got our front office insider Bobby Marks with us and give Rob Palenka and that front office in LA a lot of credit for what they've done for the team that's about to be defending a championship. But considering what they've done, what else can they do? Yeah, rarely do we see a team flip their roster over, right? right? Of course, they still have LeBron James and Anthony Davis, but Wes Matthews, Montrez Harrell, and Contavious Colwell Pope, of course, is back. Dennis Schroeder, they've added. Now, this is what they have left to do. They've got four roster spots. Mm -hmm. They only have the veteran minimum exception that's worth about $2.6 million. But here's the challenge. They are hard cap, so you need to fit those spots under that number, $6.5 million. But the challenge becomes is, and here's a player that's being linked to them, is a player like Marcus Gasol. To get Marcus Gasol, it's got to be on the veteran minimum exception. Right. Unless you can try to work out a sign and trade, possibly for someone like JaVale McGee. The hard part is he only makes $4 million. So you've got to make the money work. But so far, this team has really reshaped itself. Best team in the West right now. Yeah, it'd be interesting if Gasol wants to go West and try to win a second NBA championship. All right, so let's talk about some of the uh, another team, Bobby, that maybe is not getting the attention it deserves based on what they've done with their roster. Yeah, that's the Portland Trailblazers. That's a team that was just fighting to get into the playoffs last year, right. sneaks into the eighth uh, seed. I've got them as a the number two team in the Western Conference really? right now. Yes, they okay. get an A plus for the offseason. I know we don't give trophies for the offseason. No, we do not. But they're getting, it, they're getting it from me. And I think when we look at their roster, here's what they've been able to do. They've added Robert Covington from the Rockets. Yep. They've re-signed Rodney Hood. Of course, Damian Lillard, CJ McCollum, and Yosef Nurkic is back. But this is what I really like. Carmelo, back for another year. Derek Jones from the Heat. Uh, Zach Collins returns. Ennis Cantor. Um, Harry Giles. And was, this is what I call them. I call it the $40 million club, right? <laughs> okay. Canner and Covington in trades, free agents, Hood, Anthony Jones, and of course, Harry Giles. Yeah. And where I see them, this is a top four team in the Western Conference. You know, they're way up there in the Pacific Northwest. Oftentimes, they kind of get overlooked, but you got to give Neil O'Shea credit for what they've done so far. And Bobby Marks said the number two <laughs> in the West right now. We'll see how that plays out throughout the season. Bob, appreciate it. Wojnowski, a couple of all-star players have earned max contracts. We start in Boston where Jason Tatum has agreed to a five-year, $163 million extension with the Celtics. It includes a 30% escalator clause that could turn that guaranteed 163 into $195 million should Tatum make one of the three all-NBA teams. The 22-year-old averaged career highs of 23 points, seven rebounds, and three assists last season. Celtics went to the Eastern Conference Finals for a second straight year. Also grabbing a max bag, Donovan Mitchell. The Jazz guard getting that same five-year, $163 million extension. Again, that could balloon to 195 if he reaches all-NBA status. The 24-year-old averaged 24 points a game last season, and then he dropped two 50-point games during Utah's seven-game series loss to Denver in this year's playoffs. So all total, you have four players from the 2017 draft class who have scored more than 3,000 points in their young NBA careers. And now three of them have agreed to rookie Supermax extensions with those same squads. The number one pick from that year, Markel Fultz, well, he's no longer with the team that drafted him. Well, with us, though, is the aforementioned Adrian Wojnarowski. And, you know, what was I say to most NBA fans, they look at these deals, they felt like no-brainers for both the player and the squads. But let's start with Mitchell and the reason that he wanted to stay in Utah and they were doing everything to keep him. Yeah, there's a great relationship there, Donovan Mitchell, not just that organization, but that community. And he came to them right or at the draft, right before Gordon Hayward left in free right. agency. That was a wounded city. And immediately he gave them hope. And they realized very quickly they had a superstar and a player to build around. And now he comes back. Uh, you saw what he did in the bubble. And, and a player that really has blossomed, you've seen as a man and I, you see him at the forefront of the social justice movement this summer in the league and, and, and he's had a strong voice with that in that Salt Lake community and right. you'll see a lot of that going forward and he's just the kind of person that new ownership there, Ryan Smith, their front office that they want to build around.
We often talk about players that are face of the franchise. He's definitely that there in Salt Lake City. All right, but let's go over to Boston. Jason Tatum, I mean, he really emerged as a star this past season. Granted, they got some young talent in that squad, but that seems to be the building piece for this team going, future, going ahead. Absolutely, especially you've seen some stars come and go from Boston. Sure. Max players, Kyrie Irving, Al Horford, uh, and then Gordon Hayward. But Jason Tatum uh, is the player now five years, close to 200 million, like Mitchell, uh, with a, one more all-star appearance. And you've already seen with Tatum, he is a player. He can be the best player on a championship team. And, you know, for this Celtic organization with such a history of great ones, he's right. one you imagine up in the rafter someday. It's not easy to get your number up there, uh, but but you imagine it up there, and and he's now for them with Jalen Brown and uh, you know this you know young core they have. He's the centerpiece. Yeah, I give a lot of credit to Danny Ainge, not only just drafting Jason Tatum out of Duke, but realizing that he could be a cornerstone for this organization going forward. Well, which is always appreciate the time, brother. Thanks, Mike. All right. Well, this is where the Lakers are right now, and it, it is rare for a championship team to kind of flip this whole roster. And first, we saw the move with Dennis Schroeder training for Danny Green. He replaces Rajon Rondo. Wesley Matthews was signed for the um, biannual exception, replaces Contavious Caldwell Pope. Oh, we can't get him in there. Montrez Harrell. Replaces Dwight Howard. No, nope. touchscreen's not working, but they're in there. Trust me, they're in there. And when you look at their resume, as far as what they have with that roster, six roster spots open. They've got bird rights on Contavious Caldwell Pope. They still have the veteran minimum, minimum exception, and they're $14 million below the luxury tax. They still have some work to do here, but as, as, you, as you could see, this roster has totally flipped the Montrez Harrell signing, Wesley Matthews, Dennis Schroeder in the trade. And you still have, of course, LeBron James and Anthony Davis. He's not a free agent, but he is unhappy. What's next for James Harden? How about Vince Carter on the best fit for Harden? That's later on scale. De'Aaron Fox is their point guard of the future, agreeing to sign him to a max extension for at least $163 million over five seasons. It's the richest contract in franchise history, surpassing Chris Webber. Uh, league's reigning sixth man of the year, Montrez Harrell, agreed to a two-year deal with the Lakers. Worth 19 million with a player option in year two. Harrell ranked second in the NBA in scoring off the bench at just over 18 points per game. And Danilo Gallinari cashed in with the Hawks, agreeing to a three-year, $61.5 million deal. He should help an Atlanta team that shot just 33% from the three last season. That was the worst in the NBA. Oh, look at old Dwight Howard. I'm staying right where I belong. Laker Nation, I love y'all. Purple and gold never gets old. That's how it started. <laughs> That's what he said, but what did he mean? <laughs> he shuffled off to Philadelphia before the day was done. We got just the man we need to talk to, Adrian Wojnarowski, joining us now on SportsCenter. So, Adrian, let's start at the top with the Lakers. Uh, even as they won a championship last year, there were lots of questions about the depth and, and what they do outside of LeBron James and Anthony Davis. They got some answers. They added Dennis Schroeder and now Wesley Matthews and Montrez Harrell. What's going on with L.A.? Yeah, they certainly had to address that center position once Dwight Howard uh, headed to Philadelphia to play for Doc Rivers and, and Daryl Morey. And uh, Montrez Harrell comes from the Clippers, where he was you know, a very productive player. Uh, but uh, they get him at essentially the mid-level exception, that two years, $19.5 million with a player option on year two. And, and you know, the priority for the Clippers was keeping Marcus Morris, and they're going to do that with a four-year $64 million deal, I'm told. Uh, so, Anthony Davis, no need to worry in L.A.? Yeah, Anthony Davis will be back with the Lakers. He's going to take some time to decide, I'm told, at least through Thanksgiving next week, about how he wants to structure his deal with L.A. And, you know, he certainly has several options in terms of the length. You know, one option for him will be to, to get his contract um, lengthwise on par with LeBron James. That would be a essentially a three-year deal with, an, with a player option after the second year, and then he and LeBron uh, would be contractually aligned. They obviously share the same agent, Rich Paul. All right, so meanwhile in Boston, Gordon Hayward opted out of his contract with the Celtics, but he may not be leaving. What's going on? 
He, he still has, Hayward does, several options. His agent, Mark Bartlestein, has been talking uh, with, with, with several teams on sign-and-trade scenarios where the Celtics would get back uh, some players uh, from, uh, or perhaps picks, from a team, and it would allow Hayward to do uh, a multi-year, you know, $100 million type deal, which is he would like to get uh, a long-term deal here. New York is offering, you know, a bigger number on shorter years. That is an option for him. Uh, the Pacers and the Celtics had gone back and forth and talked. Gordon Hayward is obviously from Indianapolis, played at Butler. Uh, that, that has certainly been a scenario for him. And another scenario that remains there, um, uh, Stan, is returning to the Celtics. He could re-sign with Boston. And, and if Boston wanted to trade him in the future, if he wanted to move on, it's a lot easier to do that uh, down the road with Gordon Hayward if he's under contract. The Hawks add some shooting with Danilo Gallinari, three years, $61.5 million. What are they thinking when it comes to roster building? Well, this is a very, they have a very talented young core. Travis Schlenk has built uh, in Atlanta, led by Trey Young, certainly. Uh, but they're a team that wanted to start to compete to get into playoffs. And you don't do that with young players. You do it with accomplished veterans, veterans like Gallinari, uh, three years, $61.5 million for Gallo. Uh, the most ever for a player over 30 who's never played in an All-Star game. That's an interesting fact on that deal. But he is uh, a guy who can score the ball all over the floor. And I don't think the Hawks are done. They have more cap space. Uh, there are more, there, there's some more veteran players out there that they would like to add. They want a team that's going to compete a little closer uh, to that eighth seed in the, in the, in the uh, Eastern Conference. The Nets thinking even bigger than that in the Eastern Conference. They keep Joe Harris. General Manager Sean Marks said that was their biggest priority in free agency, and they got it done. Uh, very interesting situation in Brooklyn. Uh, what's going on there? Four years, $75 million for Joe Harris. Uh, listen, his career has blossomed with the Nets, and he was essentially out of the league when they brought him in there, and he's turned it into uh, you know, a massive contract. Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant, uh, when you have players like that who, who command the kind of defensive attention those two do, when you have a shooter like Joe Harris out there, uh, it, was just, it was the kind of player that Sean Marks and new coach Steve Nash did not want to lose, and uh, they keep Joe Harris now at, at that $75 million deal. And, you know, you're starting to see that Nets team, uh, they, took, they brought in Bruce Brown from Detroit, and you're seeing their, their backcourt, uh, their, you know, adding some backcourt depth and then solidifying it with Joe Harris. Meanwhile, Sacramento is convinced that it has found the, the centerpiece of its franchise moving forward. Darren Fox, uh, he signs a max deal.